Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. This is Steve. We're talking Final Cut Pro 10 and specifically how to archive your projects. Archiving a project. So you're done. You're done. And you want to make sure that a year from now. Your client never gets his hands on it again. <laughs> you want to put it Well, in. they call up and they say, hey, can you bring that back up and change green to blue and change the, night, the 2013 to 2014? And, and you're like, oh, my God. Well, yeah, it's true. you got this big project. You don't want it living on your drive forever. Right. You want to be able to have a nice little container for it, put it on the shelf, as it were, so you can pull it down and then use it, you know, make well, changes to especially, it. Especially, I don't know about you, but when I'm working, I'm pulling in material from, you know, I'm downloading stuff on the internet and grabbing stock footage and grabbing mm. clips here, grabbing music there, and from all, I'm using multiple events, and when I'm done, it's kind of a mess. Yeah. And so I get, so you're gonna talk about how to, how to sort of put it all in one neat container. Buy a nice little container that you can Put, we'll send it into the Raiders of the Lost Excellent. Ark when they put it the Ark into the box and it goes off into this warehouse. Well, it's kind of like that. Kind of like that. Yeah, a okay. digital version of that scene. <laughs> okay. That's exactly what we're going to do. All right, well, okay. let's see, see how it so, works. Um, all right, so here I have a, um, a project. It's, it's, I want to keep this simple. There's, you know, Travis, my editor, and you know, we went scuba diving and we shot some stuff on GoPro and 5D and uh, 7D. And of course those cameras record in not the most video friendly codecs. So yes. they record in MPEG-2 and MPEG-4 and whatever. I mean, they're just, you want to optimize the media. Well, I remember in Final Cut 7, you, you should put that stuff in and you just, you can't do anything with it. Right. You can actually play it in Final Cut 10, but if you optimize it, you're going to be happier, especially if you're doing multiple streams. And, exactly. So yeah. all, the first thing is, is, well, finding out if, you know, you're using Optimize. I may have 20 or 30 projects. I have no, am I using original media or am I using optimized media? For you don't this? even remember. I don't right. even remember. Okay. So quick way is, you know, park your play at over clip, hit, uh, shift F and then brings you to the clip in the event library. Right. And then you can control click or right click on the clip itself and then choose reveal and finder. Okay. And what that'll do is it'll take you to the actual event library and it'll show you what media it's pointing to. In this case, uh, the media is in a high quality media folder. So this is transcoded. So the footage that is actually being referenced by this project yes. is actually high quality optimized media. Optima and you can tell it because it says transcoded media and it didn't transcode to, because it would transcode either to the high quality media or to proxy. Or it'll right? say, it'll see proxy choices. or high right. quality there. So can I ask you a question? Sure. Because what I thought you were going to do in, in Final Cut Pro is go to preferences and see if you were, were set up targeting uh, proxy or original or optimized media, but I guess that wouldn't really tell you for sure because uh, in there it's going to say it's it's original or optimized, right? Right. See, what, what Mark's referring to is, I, you know, now he's going to make me go out after a final cut, but this is actually, <laughs> actually a very important point. Um, the preferences won't necessarily tell you uh, what it's actually targeting. Like here... Yeah, it's original or, or optimized. Right, this isn't important. It's okay. original or optimized. So yeah. what Final Cut is going to say is, I'll use either or, whatever's yes. available. Okay. And this okay. is why I had to take a trip up to the finder. Yeah. Is that I that had doesn't to, tell you. You don't know which one it is. You don't. So here I can see it was high quality. Okay. Now, just, just by way of um, uh, footprint, uh, if I do a get info, that's three, that's four, roughly three and a half gigs for that, that transcoded. Okay. Now, if I go to the original media folder, yeah. same clips, um, you could see that 567 megabytes. So much, much smaller. So in terms of archiving, why archive all that optimized media when you can always create it again, right, from That's the source? Exactly. That's okay. I see where you're going. And one thing, one thing I left out. I want to back up. Mm -hmm. Notice here, I have a title that's been rendered, a couple of transitions, and then I did some color correction on this clip. These were all rendered. And the other thing is. Before you archive, you should purge all your render files. There's no reason to store all your render files unless you've got like a 12-hour green screen render or something. So I guess the basic philosophy is get rid of anything that you can create, recreate very easily because you can re-optimize the media and you can re-render yes, the project. that okay, is the moral why, of the story. Okay, great. So how do you get rid of those render well, files though? You have to go back to the project library, the very top level where all your projects okay. are. Oh, so you can do it right from within Final Cut Pro 10? Yes, you can. You, you, don't, you don't do it at the finder. Okay. You probably do it. So you select uh, the project whose files you want to purge, render files you In want to purge. In the project right? library. Okay. And then you go to the file menu and you'll see down here it says delete project render files. That couldn't be more clear. <laughs> so, in fact, okay. let's uh, go ahead and do that. And you have two choices. Unused, in other words, all the render files that you've been, because you've changed that render transition 17 times. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. <laughs> you're going to have, like, I don't want, I just, 
Just to, That's actually useful to know about, though, because I frequently will end up re-rendering stuff a ton, and it's getting huge, and I don't want to trash all the render right. files. So I have something I want to say to Apple now. Well, okay. you, okay. have a, you have so a... So Apple, <laughs> they're, to me, it should automatically purge unused render files. Why should it? Why should they sit there? Are you ever going to use them again? No, it should just automatically purge them. Should it not? I guess unless you're going to undo a change and you want to be able to go uh, back to yeah, that. Yeah, what, 20 times? Maybe. Oh, uh, yeah, knows? I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to just go all the way. I'm going to go full tilt, blow everything away. Okay. I don't want any render files. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. And it's going to go into the render file and then boom. So that can save you a lot of space in your archiving. It, it, absolutely. Okay. Um, okay, so... Let's go back into the timeline. You can see you got orange bars now. Yeah, because they're not rendered. Your color correction I see there and your yeah, title. It's all there. Mm -hmm. it's got, yeah, it's all there. Yep. So um, I was going to talk about, oh, yeah, getting the file size down to manage manageable. So I'm going to, again, Shift F, and I'm going to go back to the Finder. I know I'm probably already there, but I go back to the Finder. And see, there's I'm back to my high-quality media. So what I want to do is I'm going to select that high-quality media, just everything inside the high quality quality media folder, uh -huh. and I'm going to trash it. You're going to trash it. I just did. You just threw it away. I just did. It's gone. Now you see but, it. Now you don't. Yeah, but now this project is referencing that media. So when you go back, everything's going to be offline, isn't oh, it? Oh, au contraire, Mr. Spencer. <laughs> okay. Well, wait. I don't understand. How how is that possible? Because we just confirmed that these clips in this project are pointing to the high quality media that you just threw away. Watch. Shift F, I'm here. Now I'm going to go control click. Yeah. And I'm going to reveal in Finder. What is it pointing to now? What's I... it pointing to? Oh, it redirected to the original media folder because these file names are the exact same names as the file names that were in the transcoded media folder. It just, remember, you, we went to the preferences to look at it. Use either original or high quality media. Right? So it's deciding. It says, I can't find any. Orig uh, high quality media, so I'm going to revert to the original automatically. In fact, it's important to understand that. You're right. Final Cut's intelligence. It's like, I don't see any transcoded high quality media. Oh, but I do see these. So I'm going to, I'm going to link to those. I'm going to link to those automatically. So you don't have to do it. Nope. So you can just delete those files and you're going to be okay. So you, you trashed all your render files, you deleted all that high quality media, and by that you probably brought this, this total project and event size down, down to, to about 500 megs. Okay, from from many gigs. Many, 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 uh, many, 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 okay. mucho gigs. So I'm going to go to now to disk utility because I want to create a nice little compact little sparse image to store my archive. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new image and I'm going to call this Catalina uh, underscore archive. Oops, hopefully I spell. And I'm going to set the size. I'm going to set the size of custom size. I'm going to basically give myself a five gigabyte ceiling on this because I don't think it's going to be more than that. But this kind of determines how big the sparse image can grow. Okay, it's a maximum. It won't actually. It'll actually end up being the size of the asset you put in. That's it, correct. Right. So you just want to pick some number that's going to be larger than what you think the total is going that's to be. That's right. And we have, I have a whole article on my site about this. Okay. And uh, we covered this in our uh, media management tutorial about what size you should choose based okay. on the media you're archiving. So um, I want to go down here under image format and I'm going to choose sparse disk image. Why am I choosing this? It's because Final Cut Pro will treat the sparse image as an actual virtual disk mm -hmm. that we can copy our media to. Okay. So um, I should probably change the one line. I always tend to forget this. But the disk image itself should be named. Same. Okay. Otherwise, yes, you're going to get this. That. Yeah. You get these two separate places where so you just put the same name in. One's for the disk image, and one's for the the name of the compressed, the, the zipped file. The I don't zip, know what do you the call it. The DMJ. disk image, and then there's the mounted one. Right. The mounted volume. Now, if I go back to Final Cut, what's great about it, there's my. Oh, it just disk shows up right there. It just yeah. Automatically shows up. Yeah. So really, what I want to do is I want to go back to the project library. Okay. Select the Travis vs. Dive, yep. which is all pointing to your original media now. Control click say duplicate project, and I'm going to target, guess what I'm going to target, my new Catalina archive. Yep. Okay. Volume. And okay. I'm going to say uh, duplicate uh, project and reference events. Okay. Or I could say duplicate, if I only want just use clips, and maybe I didn't yeah. want all of the clips relative to that event. Right, and that's why, because I, I have so much stuff, it's referencing a bunch of, you yeah. know, tons of stuff, but if you just, just use clips, like all you want are the actual clips in it, but you could choose everything in you case could. you were going to go back and not only reconstruct that project, but bring in other media that you might have used before. Right, Okay. so this is the best option, I think, for the, of keeping the footprint small. If you really small. want it small, yeah. So I'm going to click OK, 
and it's going to process it. And in the background, you know, if you bring up the task screen, the background manager, it's actually doing the media management, and it's telling you kind of where it is in the media management process. But at the end of the day, I'll end up with a essentially a disk image with just the clips that are in okay. my project and just my project edits. So it'll be, it, it will create both a um, project and an event? Yes, in yeah, there? let's, let's okay. take a look. Oh, so we can see it right here. It's There's, already there in Final Cut. In fact, there it is. There's there it my, is. They even created clips for Travis' first dive. Oh, and okay. It, Just and it, and it, right. only brought in the clips that were used in the event. Yep. Or used in the project. And look, if I open this Catalina archive, guess what? There's, There's my the project. There it is. And if you right click on these, I'm um, going to go to choose Reveal in Finder, you'll notice something. They point, this media points exactly to the events folder that's sitting on the Catalina archive. Perfect. Okay. So that's there's so now now I can literally take that file um, that it, that was created that that mounted volume you could you could eject it and then you could that right there the disk image you could yeah let's find out how burn, big it is burn that, 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 that one's like four hundred like I said five hundred meg right meg, okay it's slightly less because okay. we purged the render files uh -huh. but bottom line is now that could be put on a server put on a backup and uh, I'm got a nice little soft and you're container. done it's all it's all wrapped up and done, done. and then. But, yeah. It's even just to throw it on Dropbox and so that you have at the end of the day, if some cat catastrophe happens with your machine, you've got the key pieces of that thing wrapped up and tucked away in a safe place. Yep. Nice. Sweet. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Um, thank you for that great tip. Uh, RippleTraining.com for more tips and information about Final Cut Pro 10 and related applications uh, and plugins. Um, Steve, thanks. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio, and hopefully we'll see you next week.